the main reason why I'm deciding to keep this camera over the ZV-1, spoiler alert. Hey guys, it's your family. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time here. I'm going to be filming a super, super quick comparison of the ZV-1 and the ZV-10 and letting you know whether I think one is better than the other. This I had for about a year and this I've been using for about four or five months. So I feel like I have enough real life knowledge to really give you guys a real review. Emphasis on real, okay? I am not a camera expert. I'm not going to be talking about shutter speeds and apertures. I'm going to give you guys a real life comparison about the practicalities and my experience of using both of these cameras, which one I recommend and which one I'm going to end up selling because I am not keeping two of these cameras, okay? So this is your first time here. Like I mentioned, my name is Ifeanwa. I make videos all about beauty, fashion, and lifestyle. I upload weekly vlogs on Sundays. If at some point you're feeling the vibe, consider subscribing. I would love to have you here. Before you run off, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. It really, really helps to support my channel. Let's jump into the video. Let's jump into what you're here for. Okay, let's get started. So when I first decided to invest in a vlog camera, I did so much research and I actually initially wanted the ZV-E10. Yes, this was the camera I actually wanted, primarily because of the interchangeable lens. I was considering this camera or the Canon M50. Those are the two cameras I was considering because I wanted a camera that had an interchangeable lens. I had watched a couple of videos comparing film footage from Canon and Sony cameras and I really liked the way the Sony cameras looked. At that time, I hadn't had a Sony camera since what, I was like 16 years old, so I definitely wanted to try the camera I'm filming on right now is Canon, so I wanted to try a Sony camera. Decided to go down the Sony family, essentially decided that I wanted the ZV-E10 because at the time the ZV-E10 and the ZV-1 were the exact same price, so you might as well get the camera that gives you more flexibility. However, this camera was out of stock everywhere, so I ended up settling on the ZV-1. Let me tell you guys a little bit about why after about eight months with this camera, I decided to upgrade. So this camera is so much lighter. Now that I have both cameras <laughs> side by side, it is worth mentioning, however, that on the ZV-E10, I'm not using the kit lens. This is a 11 millimeter 1.4 Sony lens that I have on this camera, which is significantly larger than the lens that it actually comes with. So it might be worth putting on the kit lens. Let's talk about the ZV-E1 for a little bit. ZV-E1 is so light, even just holding both cameras in my hand. This camera is tiny, it is minuscule. It is so great for portability. If you're the kind of girl that likes to go out with like a small handbag like me on a day-to-day, -day, this camera is perfect. It is so good for vlogging because people don't really notice when you have it in your hand. You can put this in your pocket. My biggest gripe with this camera was how cropped the lens is. I don't know why Sony did that because this camera is marketed as a vlogging camera and from a vlogging camera perspective it is just way too zoomed in. Half the time I have my camera on a tripod and even with that in order to get you know a little bit of my background I have to have it extended all the way out holding it all the way that way and by the time you do that it's no longer a small little pocketable camera. Everyone can see that you're vlogging. So from that perspective, it has started to get a little bit annoying to use. I looked into ordering this newer lens that you can put on top of it to make it a little bit more wide. I know Ulanzi also does a really popular one. However, by the time you do all of that, this camera is no longer pocketable. So if you're going to start doing that, you might as well get a camera that gives you a lot more flexibility with interchangeable lenses. Another thing I really, really, really don't like about this camera is the battery life. I had this camera, I had spare batteries, and I literally could probably get about 20 minutes of footage on a given battery before it would die. It was an absolute nuisance, so frustrating to use. And truthfully, those are the two main reasons why 
I was like, you know what, let me just go and see if the ZVE-10 is back in stock because that was the camera I initially wanted anyway. So about eight months later after I bought the ZV-1, the ZVE-10 came back in stock. And the main reason why I wanted this camera was because of the interchangeable lenses. I've been shooting on my Canon, the same Canon camera I've had for like three years or something. But just by changing the lens, I can completely get so many more looks out of my current camera. I know the power of being able to have an interchangeable lens. When I was first doing my research, I basically kept my eye out on, on the price of this camera for when it dropped. I think it was about 700 pounds or 760 when it first came back in stock. I was able to get it for about 100 pounds cheaper if I remember correctly. I'll put links to both of these cameras in my description box so you can see what the current prices are. And the lens I was able to get on sale from about 500 to 370 at the time. So this lens that I have is not the kit lens. I will do my side by sides with the actual kit lens so you can see what it looks like with the kit lens, but I've never used the kit lens. So I basically knew that I wanted this camera and I wanted this camera with a wider lens and a brighter lens. So I ended up getting this one because this camera lens is so wide. It's just so much easier to vlog with because you get so much background. You can show so much. The only thing I will say is that this lens is a little bit distorting and it almost looks a bit like a fisheye lens sometimes. So sometimes I have to crop it in a little bit more. I think the 15 millimeter would be the most natural looking like your actual eyesight type of lens, but that lens was significantly more than this one and I wasn't trying to spend more money. So I ended up going for this one. So I can't really talk about the kit lens because I haven't used the kit lens. But I will do side by sides with the kit lens in the cutaways just so you can see what it looks like, like for like. So let's talk about portability. This camera has no portability. You cannot put it in your pockets. You cannot put it in most bags. Essentially when I'm vlogging on this camera, I know that I have to take a tote bag, which is not a big deal because I have a tote bag that I love now. But prior to that, it was a little bit of a hassle. So more times than not when I'm vlogging in public and I have a small bag, I just hold this in my hand. The more I vlog, I've become more comfortable with vlogging. So even though people might look at me and be like, why does she have a camera in her hand? I don't feel uncomfortable doing it anymore. The battery life on this camera is amazing. That is the one thing I have to mention. Again, I have spare batteries. I feel like I get like an hour of filming with my current battery. And there's a really huge difference between 20 minutes and an hour. Like I don't find myself just being frustrated changing my batteries all the time. And that honestly has made a significant improvement to my workflow. The shots that I'm able to get out of this camera, in my opinion, look so much better. They look crisper. This camera also comes with an inbuilt slow motion feature, which can be really annoying because sometimes you can accidentally put it on. But once you make that mistake a couple times, you become more aware of it so you don't make it all the time. But the slow motion feature on this camera is so buttery smooth. Like it looks so much better than just filming native on the ZV-1 and slowing it down on Final Cut or whatever you use to edit. The slow motion on this looks so aesthetic. The main reason why I'm deciding to keep this camera over the ZV-1, spoiler alert, is even though it's bigger, even though it's heavier, I'm very much so fixated on things looking as good as they possibly can. I love to improve my quality. I like to make my vlogs look as cinematic as possible. And you can definitely get cinematic vlogs with the ZV-1, don't get me wrong. People do some amazing things on this camera but I just find it a lot easier to get the kind of quality that I'm looking for out of the ZV-1. And I eventually know that at some point I'm going to be able to change the lenses and do even cooler stuff with this camera. I just think this is the kind of camera that you can grow with, if that makes sense. Sometimes when I need to film wider shots, even for my sit down videos, I'll film it on here. That was never a possibility with my ZV-1. This camera just opens up a lot more options but a lot of the things that were i guess exciting about this camera like the skin smoothing feature on here the background blur all of that is also on the zve 10. they both have the same um oh look at that what you call it um screen thing oh you see how that just like pops open as soon as you open up the camera 
that's another thing to bear in mind with this. Because this doesn't have like the same retractable lens, you have to put the lens cap on and take it off before you can vlog. It's just one extra step. So sometimes when you're about to start filming, that step takes a little bit more time. It can be a little bit annoying, I'm not gonna lie. I definitely prefer the way that opens up. But again, these are not big deals. This has the same articulating screen, so really great for vlogging. It uses the same memory card, a different battery, because this battery's bigger, that's why it lasts longer. I've never used these cameras for live streaming or anything like that, so again, I can only give you guys my opinions strictly on the basis of YouTube videos and vlogging, even more specifically. So you're not losing anything by upgrading to this camera. The only thing you're losing is the portability factor. You have to decide what's important to you. If the main thing that's important to you is portability, pocketability, then go for the ZV-1. If the main thing that's important to you is the quality of your footage and being able to grow into a camera and having a camera that can maybe do sit down videos as well as vlogs, as well as cinematic style videos, as well as, you know, just a workhorse of a camera, this is the camera. For you. So I have some sample footage that I filmed. I will insert that here. I will also link some vlogs that you can watch and see the difference. So, so I'll link my most popular vlog that I filmed on the ZV-1 and my most popular vlog that I filmed on the ZV-E10 and you can also have a look and see if you can notice a difference in quality. Okay guys, so this is what it looks like with the ZV-1. My arm is fully extended. I'm sitting right in front of a window this is what it looks like this is what it zooms into <laughs> so it goes this far zoomed in and this is what it looks like zoomed all the way out okay now we're gonna go to the zve10 uh oh okay so i'm on the kit lens now and this is what it looks like with my arm fully extended so as you can see way more going on in the background, way wider. And again, this is with the kit lens. And now I am going to zoom in. And for the record, I'm on auto mode on both cameras. And you can see that this camera also zooms way faster <laughs> and a lot more as well. No one needs to be this close, okay? <laughs> I figured that I would do a low light test as well, so I'm going to close my curtains and then we're going to see what both cameras are capable of in low light situations. All right guys, so this is the ZV-1. I'm sitting in front of a window with the curtain completely closed, no other lights in my room are on. This is what the camera is doing in a low light situation. As you can see, this camera amazing quality and this is the zve 10 in the same low light situation so what do you guys think i feel like they're both equally as bright but obviously with this one it's just way wider i never use this lens to be honest and i think i might actually use it for the rest of this week with my regular vlog because i'm curious to compare it to my wider lens but yeah this is what this camera looks like So I'm sure that there are so many more differences, but on an actual usability perspective, I haven't noticed much more else. Like these are the things that really have impacted me in my video creation process. And honestly, I love both cameras. I wish they could make a camera that has all the features of the ZV-E10, but as small as the ZV-1. I know it's not possible. The perfect camera never exists. And if it does, it's like thousands and thousands of pounds. Hope you guys have found some value in this video. If you have, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos from me. And I will catch you in the next one very soon. Stay blessed, stay safe, and take care. Bye.